Jalapino. Apparently, the mad rabbit had sold a Pegasus that he did not exactly own. Lupino always wiggled out of trouble, given time. But he was out of time. The Ravens had figured out that Lupino was a rebel spy. If the fleet reached him first, they'd string him up for that. Never mind the winged horse. Lapino had apparently managed to confuse the judge by arguing that he hadn't actually stolen the winged horse. He'd only sold it. But wait, where was the prison? The village was empty. Had, had everybody fled the raven? was odd. Renato had been here, at this exact place, at this exact time. But this time, there were so many more ravens. It was definitely easier to fight inanimate objects. The village looked so peaceful. Were the villagers hiding somewhere? Of course not. No matter how much he searched, he would only find ravens here. What could he craft with the materials he had? Renato had a pretty good idea, actually. I bet I could make my sword better, thought Renato. This chest was filled with old concert t-shirts and something useful.
heathens were landing everywhere. The advance guard. He'd better get moving. If they got to Lupino first, they'd eat him for breakfast. Or a snack. Ravens weren't picky. If they got hungry, they sometimes forgot to interrogate their prisoners. Even top spies like Lupino. Where had the mad rabbit got to? Renato felt a chill run down his back. Or possibly a flea. Dirty and bloody, Renardo finally reached Lapino. The rabbit was practicing his shuffle. Renardo recognized the cards. It was Lapino's favorite deck. Oh, I thought you were in danger. I am. The ravens are coming. Oh, the prison thing. Right, yeah, we well, see, this guard owed me 53 ducats, so we made a deal. They're very reasonable people, actually, for weasels. Now, I got a brilliant plan to kidnap Zenobia. We. Capture Zenobia, we find out what she knows. And that's the whole war right there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Capture the Emperor's greatest general, who happened to also be a deadly sorcerer, and, oh, his only daughter? Uh, that would be worth it. And it would be nice to see her. He'd always had a soft spot for her. And, he felt sure, she had one for him. On the other hand, he could still get to the core of the Sky Ripper, even if he couldn't get the whole thing. It must have great power. Zenobia wasn't just the Emperor's daughter, of course. She'd been Renato's best friend in Swordfu school. And you're still mad for her, the rabbit reminded him. The rabbit had a point, and Renato had a feeling she'd want to see him again. Who knows what could happen between the two of them this time around? She knows all his plans, chuckled the master spy. She won't give them up easily. <laughs> She'll tell the interrogators all right, said Lapino. Taking her would change the game all right. The city was already under Zenobia's control. I had to admire her efficiency. Renato shivered at the thought of Zenobia at the mercy of the interrogators. Would he really turn her over to them? But this was war. It wasn't meant to be pretty. Sorry, mustache, thought Renato. Sort of yanking his own chain, wasn't he?
firewalls only let you through if they think you're hot enough. Exactly with Lapino up to this time. You could see the wheels spinning inside his head. He made Granado dizzy, in fact. It wasn't his fault. They look so... breakable. So, what's this plan of yours? Use me as bait, said Lupino. And he outlined a slightly complicated plan that involved geese, a net, setting the farfare a little bit on fire, Lapino dressing as an old blind toad, and Renardo hiding inside a monstrous watermelon. What could possibly go wrong? thought Renardo. Ah, oh, this is gonna be fun, said Lapino, as he ran to go set up his marvelous plan. Hey! Hey, a workbench! He could try out his new bling. Renato felt dubious about the whole plan. With every step, he was waiting for it all to go horribly wrong. But against all odds, Lapino's idiotic plan worked. Zenobia's ravens ran off after the geese, the net dropped, and Renato jumped out of the watermelon and put his sword to Zenobia's throat. Renato, she said. Are those new scars? They look good on you. You never return my velvet jacket. It was my favorite. You look stupid in velvet. Ah, oh, what does an imperial princess know about style? Ah, oh, get a room, you two, said Lupino, probably sensing the chemistry. But the fleet was coming on fast, so they took Zenobia east over the Nexus. She'd vanished from Swordful School, from his life, without even saying goodbye, without ever telling him she was the Emperor's adopted daughter. Renardo was aware of her feelings. Maybe this was a bad idea, but... Was he letting his own feelings get the better of him? Listen, said Renara. Let's not do this. Let's not do what? Asked Zenobia. Look, you're the Emperor's right hand. You were going to have me interrogated, he said. Sure, yeah, but then I remembered how you feel about me. How I feel about you? You were going to have me interrogated. But I didn't, because you care about me, said Renato. Well, guess again, Buster, he said as she pushed him off his own boat. As he plummeted towards the bottomless clouds of the abyss, Renato decided that he not really handle the situation with his usual finesse. He had tried something bold and paid the price for it.
The city was already under Zenobia's control. I had to admire her efficiency. Renato shivered at the thought of Zenobia at the mercy of the interrogators. Would he really turn her over to them? But this was war. It wasn't meant to be pretty. Doctor, when you can eat fruit to heal. but People had laughed at the government workbench placement program, but you could see the benefits everywhere. Exactly was Lapino up to this time. You could see the wheels spinning inside his head. They made Renato dizzy, in fact. Jewel. Bernardo couldn't wait to find a workbench. So, what's this plan of yours? Use me as bait, said Lupino. And he outlined a slightly complicated plan that involved geese, a net, setting the farfare a little bit on fire, Lupino dressing as an old blind toad, and Renardo hiding inside a monstrous watermelon. What could possibly go wrong? Thought Renardo. Oh, go ahead. I'm sure you know better, said Lapino. wondered what he could make with all this ore and essence. Oh, probably a sword.
Renato slinked through Zenobia's ship, making no sound at all. Where were her guards? Finally, he reached her bedroom. She was curled up at her bed. Oh, he'd forgotten how beautiful she was. How sleek. How soft. He tapped her on the shoulder with his sword. She became smoke. And he noticed he had a blade to his throat. Stay a while. Purred a familiar voice. Did you really think you could capture me? Zenobia said as her ship lifted off. Now I just wanted some privacy, Renato said. Renato knew she still had feelings for him. Maybe he could just cut to the chase. But was timing right for that? Did you ever wonder why the Emperor adopted you? And he told her why. His Imperial Majesty wanted to bring the Lost Gods back. They could make him immortal. But to seal the bargain, he needed a sacrifice. Someone who truly loved him. You're lying. She was furious. You can't prove that. I can. And so they set sail for the Nexus. Scientists at the observatory have resurrected one of his victims. Well, he's not exactly alive, but it can talk and it can't lie. You took a big risk. You know, I could just cast a spell to make you tell me where the rebel base is. And you wouldn't consider that cheating? She frowned. Ugh, fine. Let's go get your witness. The rebellion had started after atrocities that the Empire hushed up. Renato had rescued a priest whose order had been massacred for one book. He had slept in a burnt village. Dead kittens and puppies had come to tell him what the Emperor had done to them. You know what I hate about you guys? Everything. your hook. something he'd seen in a play once. She caught up with him. Don't you think I'd know if my father started practicing black magic? Why? Would you want to join in? Oh, no! No, I'd destroy his books and... Uh, all right, I suppose I wouldn't. She stopped, troubled. 
he ran on. This is quite the view, he thought. Bernardo had been searching for a way to save the rebellion. Lapina wanted to capture and interrogate Zenobia. But if he could show her proof of her father's madness, maybe she would join the rebellion. Energy spheres. Easy to dodge, but boy did they sting if you didn't pay attention. Just liable to explode if you upset them. Sometimes, at home, he'd wave his sword around for hours. The observatory was a burning hulk. Dead scientists and black feathers everywhere. The ravens had taken care to burn the reanimated witness to cinders. Zenobia stared around, shocked. The scientists had been neutral. They had no part in the rebellion. Take me to your council. She said, shaken. I have things to tell them. It was what Renardo had gambled on. The Zenobia would turn against her father once she knew his madness. But the rebel base was secret. Could he really risk taking the Emperor's daughter there, even if she did love him? Renata reached Lapino by Far Speaker Toad, the one creature the Ravens had left alive at the observatory. I'll meet up with you at the base, Lapino said through the Toad. Good thinking. Renata gave him the coordinates. There's a shuttle here I can uh, borrow. Renata found Zenobia in the chart room. I've been having awful dreams, she said. Dead kittens and oh, worse. I thought there were only dreams, you know. Why would anyone want the lost gods back? In those days, the favorite of a god could become immortal. She held herself and shivered. He wants to become an eater of souls. Well, I'm not afraid of dying. Just dying of boredom. <laughs> Renato said, but she didn't laugh. Silence fell as they flew towards the ruins of the city of Ubar where the rebellion leadership was hiding. If Zenobia couldn't help them fight off her father, no one could.
As they touched the ground, he could smell the ravens and hear their hungry cause in the distance. They're probably looking for me, she said. You go on ahead. She had that fiery look in her eyes that he'd always loved. It was a bit odd, though, how easy she'd been to convince. It was what he'd gambled on, but he'd expected more of an argument. She'd always loved to argue. She considered it the fastest way to the truth. Maybe she'd long suspected the truth. Sometimes all it took was taking the bandages from your eyes. That must be it, he told himself. Renato Slash! Fix for life insurance. Getting to put my gems in my gloves. soon be over. She could send orders to the fleet that would leave their defenses wide open. The rebels could sail right in and capture the Emperor. Victory, with not too many casualties. That was always a rush. caught their breath under a ruined arch. It's beautiful, she said. This was the library of Ubar, he said. Your father's ravens thought they had an ancient book. She nodded. Was she crying? This was exactly what I wanted, Renata thought. To turn her to our cause. So, oh, why do I feel something is terribly wrong? Because nothing ever goes this smoothly, is why. Renato had always wanted a flying carpet. This was more like a flying tabletop, but it would do.
himself. Long stairs. So he was close to the rebel base. Nothing was on fire. So far, so good. toads swarmed around Zenobia, shocked she was there, shocked she had changed sides. Then the walls exploded. He heard toads croaking, Oh, the ravens! Blackbirds were pouring through holes everywhere. It's a trap! cried the council speaker. In the confusion, he saw flashes of magic. Then Zenobia being hustled off by Imperial troops. So... She had betrayed him after all. Renato ran for his ship. The Farfarer flew into the clouds, barely losing the Imperial Ravens pursuing him. The rebellion was lost. And he had lost it. There was nothing to do but find Zenobia and make her pay for her treachery. His heart ached. He still loved her. But he had trusted her and he had been a fool. She would be back at the fleet gloating with her mad, bloodthirsty father. For all Renardo knew, she was helping him bring back the old lost gods back from their exile. Renato landed in the middle of the Imperial fleet. The rebels were losing badly. Without leadership, it was a slaughter. Renato felt strangely free, trying not to think about how he had lost the war, trying not to think about how he had loved Zenobia, blinded himself to her treachery. That's what it meant to be a hero, to keep on fighting after the most bitter of betrayals, to never know if you could trust anyone Cats, what a waste of fur. He felt like Tarzan.
terror of the sandcastles when he was too... A very clever engineer named Elon Muskrat had got his start making floating platforms. Not many people knew that. fled to safety, or was he forlornly carrying on the few rebels Ronaldo could see here or there? It didn't matter anymore. All there was was slash and spin, parry and lunge, over and over as he fought his way across the fleet. All there was was finding the girl he'd once loved, who had used his love against him and putting as big a hole in her heart as she'd left in his. Zenobia was there, advancing on Lapino. So the mad rabbit had survived. Save me, or I'm done for! Screamed Lapino. Zenobia turned, showing her teeth in a smile. You're alive! Renato ran towards the witch. Lapino's the one who betrayed you! She shouted. He warned my father! Renato sank his sword into the witch before she could fool him again. She stared at him. Heart broken. No! Lapino's the traitor! Then he felt a knife in his back. I'm afraid she's right, said the mad rabbit. Ain't I a stinker? Then the sun went out. Renato stared at the book. He was still alive, again, and still only flying away from burning Ubar. Had he lived that adventure, or only dreamt it? Had he really died? 
It felt so real, not like a dream at all. And he'd lost again. Oh, he hated that. But he had made different choices. And he'd lost in a different way. It was the book, wasn't it? Oracles showed you your destiny. But this, this was showing him different ways he could die miserably. Thanks a bunch, book, he thought. But these were destinies that he did not have to fulfill. But he'd learn another true thing. Lapino was a traitor. Renato had suspected there was something wrong with the mad rabbit. But now he knew there was malice behind his goofiness. But that meant there must be a destiny where he survived and won, right? Uh, otherwise, what was the point? And with that, the book's pages fluttered back once more to the beginning and... The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced, or so a scholar in the mountains had told him. Surely the weapon that banished the lost gods could defeat the Emperor. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Emperor had brought the Sky Ripper pieces up out of ancient burial by his obscene rituals. Could this be where the Iblis Stone was hidden? Someone better get it before he does, thought Renardo. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion. But could Renato really leave an old friend to the Ravens 